Hi there, welcome back to Riella's Army of Dolls, where I'm going to talk to you about everything you ever wanted to learn about collectible fashion dolls. This segment is called My Top 5, and today the top 5 I'm going to be talking about is the underrated fashion dolls on the market. What do I mean by that? Well, those are dolls who maybe aren't as well known and you could pick up way less expensively than other comparable dolls on the market. So what are my top five that you should be looking out for? Well, first of all, I'll start with my runners up. So one of my runners up is by the Takara Doll Company. They're the most well known for their Blythe dolls and also for their Licker dolls. But they also have another little known fashion doll. I think she's from the 1980s. She's called Lady Luminous. Um, she's actually a 16 inch fashion doll, but I didn't know that until I found one randomly online. I thought, wow, that doll looks beautiful considering you know how inexpensive she is. Let's give it a go. She arrived and it turned out she was a 16 inch doll who could fit most of the same clothes as um, Grace from Robert Tonner, so like the RTB 101 dolls and many other 16 inch fashion dolls clothes as well. She's not very poseable, she only moves her arms. She was meant more as a display for clothing, but actually heaps of people buy those dolls to display their clothing. And so for me, she's a wonderful doll um, you can find, if you can find her, at really surprisingly affordable price. My next runner up um, is the J doll. She's also an Asian fashion doll. She's made by Jun Planning, who's best known um, for their pull-up dolls. Um, but the J dolls just didn't take off quite the same way as the pull-up dolls. They didn't last um, for very long. She's a 12 inch doll. So very similar in size to Barbie um, and also to like Momoko and dolls like that. She has these amazing elaborate fashions that are meant to suit different um, places. Each of the dolls has a name of a different street around the world and the clothes are superb. She also has even has um, inset eyes, which is really hard to find and I know really popular in dolls like that. My final runner up um, is from Integrity Toys. Now, most of the Integrity Toys dolls are really, really expensive, um, and no matter what they are, it's just really hard to find them. So um, one toy that I discovered is the Dynamite Girls line. You might have heard of them, you might not. They're just one of those lines that somehow has been a little bit forgotten along the way. And they weren't super expensive when they came out and unlike a lot, they just haven't gone up in value that much. So you can still get them at really pretty good prices. Um, so if you have a look for them, I think they're beautiful and one thing that makes them um, extra special that they're you know pretty reasonably priced is that they actually use the same or very much the same body as Poppy Parker and as the FR Nippon dolls. Now both of those lines are really popular and really hard to find. So if you find just a Poppy head for example um, you can put it onto a Dynamite Girls body, you can use the same clothing, the same shoes and you've got yourself already you know a really expanded collection without spending a fortune so the dynamite girls really fabulous line to look up if you don't know them yet so now moving on to my top five we'll work backwards number five is the 18 inch kitty collier doll i've got one right here to show you now this doll is a robert tonner doll um, but for some reason, the Kitty Collier, especially the 18 inch one, so the mini, the tiny Kitty Colliers are really popular and really, really well known. But for some reason, the 18 inch dolls just haven't really grabbed um, the collector market as much as so many of the other dolls. And I think that's really surprising considering you can see what a beautiful face she has. You can also see that she has this incredibly elaborate fashion and most of the dolls are like this. She's got sumptuous beading on her gown. Um, she's really high quality, great shoes. She came with a stand and everything. I think one reason why she's not as popular as some of the other dolls is because of her posing abilities. So Kitty Collier is one of the earlier toners and she only moves her arms up and down and her legs, although they've got a pretty good range of movement, they only bend at the thigh. And I do think that's one reason um, why she hasn't grabbed the collector market as much. But I think that's really sad because they 
are such incredibly beautiful dolls. This one has a different face mold. This is the um, Miss America doll. Same line, same body. And again, this incredible and elaborate costume. She's got this um, poofy gown, this um, long cape. She also came um, with a crown because she's of course winning the Miss America contest. And so you get that crown, um, real metal that she can wear as well. Uh, and so this doll I actually got from eBay for about $60. And although, you know, compared with some dolls, that's not super cheap, but compared with the other Robert Tonner dolls, that's incredibly well priced for such an elaborate doll. The reason she's only number five though, is because I guess, um, even though she is well priced compared with um, other Robert Tonners, she's still not super duper cheap. But that said, if you're looking to get into the Tonner doll market, um, I don't think I mentioned that she even has those inset eyes, which again, super rare and heaps of collectors are looking for. This is a great doll to start with. You can get one um, really cheap for what she is. Now on to number four. So number four um, is another doll who's again, and none of these dolls are super well known. This one is less well known. This is a the Mod British Birds dolls who are designed by Doug James and Laura Meisner. Doug James is actually quite famous in the doll making world, but this is one of the lines that people have kind of forgotten. She is um, from the same era as uh, the Tonna Tyler doll, so around the early 2000s. Um, these two characters are called Daisy and Willow. They can be a little hard to sort of uh, locate online. If you're looking for one, you might need to look up Mod British Birds. You might need to search for Summers and Field, which are the surnames of the characters. You might need to search for Daisy and Willow. And so that confusion, I think, is perhaps one of the reason why they've been a bit lost. I just love this one's uh, makeup and hairstyle. She's so fabulous. Um, now, these dolls, I think one of the reasons they're not so I guess they haven't stuck around as long as um, like the, the Tonner Tylers is again that posability. They really don't have much. The bodies are not super attractive in their own right, but the heads are really high quality um, and the, the painting and the clothing is incredible. I love that these ones um, are made to have a 60s style. So they were set in the 1960s, this, um, this line, and all of their clothes are based on that. So these are a couple of them. You might notice that this one has a completely different body. So I did a little experiment that I've never seen anyone try before, which is putting one of their heads onto a Tonna Tyler body. I think it looks great and they wear exactly the same clothes, um, but at the same time, it's a little bit weird. Um, the head, doesn't quite fit. So I'm not sure if I recommend that combo. I only give it a go if you're pretty confident with um, customizing because it won't be super easy. And I will say that if I whack her quite hard, I think her head will still fall off. Um, so yeah, try it if you can, because I actually really like the combo. I've done that a couple of times. You'll see I've done that here with the other character as well. And another one of those cool 60s outfits. Even if you don't love the doll, just for the outfits, um, to give a bit more costume to your other 16 inch dolls, super fantastic deals. You can get these dolls um, for, well, it really varies because of course they're second hand and so it's what people are selling them for. But I've purchased these dolls for anywhere between $25 and $60, depending on you know which model and how rare they are. Um, but usually, I guess, average around $30 to $40. Clothing, you can get as little as $20 for a whole outfit with boots. Um, and, and one thing I would say is just be a bit wary of the faux leather if you're buying these. Um, older faux leather has a pretty bad reputation anyway, but I'd say these are some of the worst um, faux leathers I've ever seen. You can see how they're peeling. They become quite sticky to the touch as well. I'm planning to repaint these boots at some point. It doesn't really bother me. I think they're cute anyway. Okay, so she is number four um, on my list of underrated fashion dolls. Wonderful doll. Look her up if you haven't seen her before. Mod British Birds or Summers and Field. Moving on, number three is uh, my first 12 inch fashion doll in this um, series. This 
is you might have heard of this doll. She's perhaps the best known of the dolls I'm going to be talking about today. So if I can get her in focus because her face is a bit smaller. There she is. Um, this is Jenny by the Takara Company. Uh, so again, I mentioned them before, best known for Blythe and Liquor. Jenny is really goes well with Licker if you have one. She's like her older sister. Um, she is 11 inches tall, whereas Licker is about eight. Um, but for some reason, although Licker has, she was introduced a bit earlier and really took off. And I think maybe they brought in Jenny to be a bit of a competitor to Barbie um, because she's in that size range, but she didn't stay around as long they're not being made now and people seem to have kind of forgotten her so you can get these really incredible jenny dolls um at really low prices i adore this one her um her super it's like almost like a spy gown and her bright blue hair i think i paid about 25 dollars for her in her box she was brand new um they also have these collector series. This is one of my favourites. She's from the Calendar Girl series um, and she has a gothic Lolita style which goes really well because um, she's uh, an Asian fashion doll and that's one of those um, styles that's really popular um, over in Japan in particular. And these dolls, they, these ones are perhaps a little bit harder to find but even so, um, this doll I think I paid about $50 for and she's one of the most sought after of the Jennies now. Um, she has these cool rocking horse platform shoes as well. And she also has an umbrella um, that opens. Um, and so these are fantastic dolls, really great value. And uh, there are a lot of them out there too, unlike some of the other ones I'm talking about at the moment. Um, these ones are pretty easy to find. You may struggle if you want a very specific doll. Um, that can be a bit harder. This one here, um, just trying to get her into focus. There she is. Um, it has really cool ringlets. So she's got this amazing um, period hairstyle there. Uh, they've all got beautiful faces, I believe. It's a bit anime style, which really goes with, um, with their appearance. You can see that I've also dressed her in a genuine Barbie outfit, which shows how versatile these dolls are. That Although they're a tad smaller than Barbie, you can use them, fit them into those clothes. So it gives you a lot more variety you can do with them. Um, so Takara Jenny is number three of my underrated fashion dolls. Um, and she is probably the easiest to, to find of all the dolls I'm talking about. Now, moving into one and two, it's super hard to separate. These are my real, you know, absolute babies of fashion dolls, the ones I just love. Uh, so the next one, I'm putting her at number two, although it makes me a bit sad to only put her at number two because she's one of my favourite dolls in the world. Uh, when I first started collecting fashion dolls many, many years ago, when I was in my early 20s, these dolls were being released at the time. She is called Susie and she comes from R&D um, fashion dolls, not making dolls anymore, unfortunately, um, although they do still make doll fashions and you can look them up on Facebook. Um, but under the name exclusively R&D now. Uh, but when I was young, these dolls were actually being released. I was buying them direct from R&D, loved them. But then, you know, I was a young adult. I thought, oh, dolls, you know, you're going to grow out of that one day. And I thought I, you know, was being clever and growing out of fashion dolls. And I sold my Susie's. And um, it's one of the worst things, one of the worst decisions I ever made. Because when I started looking for them, of course, they're way harder to find now because they're not being released anymore. That said, because they're not that well known, um, they're still not expensive. So if they're hard to find, but if you find them, you can get these dolls really reasonably priced. They are wonderful 12-inch um, fashion dolls with beautiful articulation, very similar to a Momoko doll, um, also similar to um, some of the earlier Integrity Toys dolls, and I would say the quality is pretty much on par with Momoko and um, Integrity. This Susie is uh, one of the rarer ones. Um, she wasn't super cheap when I bought her, but 
but you know when we're thinking about an integrity toys doll is going to cost you you know 165 dollars for a base model one um and for something fancier obviously you're going to go up to more like 200 dollars um and even this doll i think you know she was one of the more expensive susies i have but i think she was still only about um 120 130 dollars and some of them much much cheaper so i'm just showing you one of my favorites here um susie comes the other thing i love about susie is the boxes so this one i got much more cheaply i think i paid about 40 dollars for her um she is called china girl and i would rate the Suzy box packaging, one of the best in the market. I know there are some that are fancier, you know, you can get really fancy packaging, but fancy doesn't always mean good. Um, this package is quite simple, it just looks so classy. And so Suzy are some of the few dolls that I have that I have left some of them in their boxes so I can admire because I think they look gorgeous in these boxes. Um, you can see the whole doll, they've got the label, they are just a wonderful package. So Susie by R and D, they are amazing. Um, and if you you know don't think they're amazing yet, her face. Um, obviously, people have thought it's so beautiful that she has been remade by Integrity Doys with the same face mold and now also by JHD Mitzi because obviously that face, everybody agrees, is just spectacular. Um, but so she was number two, but it's so hard to choose between one and two, I will be honest. Number one, I've put her in number one because they're so cheap um, and so amazing value for it. There are also lots of them out there. So some of these dolls are a bit hard to find, but these dolls, not so much. So this is another 16 inch doll. She is by the Madame Alexander company, really well known company for making a lot of collectible dolls. Um, and a lot of people don't know that they made a 16 inch fashion doll, again, contemporary to um, Jean Marshall and Robert Tonner dolls, but just not quite as popular as them. And there are a lot of them, so they're not super rare, um, but they are, in my opinion, just as beautiful um, and, you know, just as stylish as Jean and Tonna in, in their own way, of course. Not necessarily the most realistic of them, but I actually quite like that, you know, sort of larger than life, um, very slightly cartoony appearance that she has along with you know being beautiful and um and simple looking so she is alex this one um is quite a rare um you know small release doll even so i only paid about 80 dollars for her and there are a lot of alexes out there that you can get for 25 30 dollars they are nearly the same size as Jean Marshall. You can change and share a lot of clothes um, and shoes with Jean Marshall and some with Tonno dolls, especially with the Antoinette body. I often have my Antoinettes in Alex outfits because they are fabulous and it just gives you that extra pop to her wardrobe um, if she is wearing more. Now Alex had quite a lot of releases. There are heaps of them. So they're, you know, it's easy to find them, but there's also heaps of different variety for you to collect. Um, she also had two friends. So she had a little bit of diversity in the range, which was great. There's an African-American doll called Paris. Um, there's also the Asian doll who is my personal favorite, who is called Jade or Jade Lee. They did change her name at some point to Jade Lee, which I imagine was for, for copyright reasons. Um, I think she has a, just a gorgeous face. This one is a super rare jade. I think there's only about 50 of her around. She's from, um, I think, uh, maybe Paris Fashion Doll Convention. Definitely convention. Um, and this is one of my favourites that exists. She has this gorgeous long gown um, with gathers, um, all this ruching at the front. I think just one of the most stunning combinations of doll and clothing ever. I've never changed her clothes. Um, I don't think I want to because I just love looking at her the way she is. Um, and again, despite her being really rare, 
I just didn't didn't pay that much for her. Um, again, maybe like $75. And wow, you get so much for that. And as I said, some of them are you know, really cheap. You can get, you can occasionally get these dolls for like $15 on eBay. And even if it's just for the outfit, you know, throw away the doll, the outfit is alone is worth that. So she is number one because I think she combines beauty, relative ease of acquiring and price all in one. Uh, so number one of my underrated fashion dolls, Alex from Madam Alexander. Now you might have completely different ideas of what dolls people should know more about, what dolls people should be collecting that they maybe aren't yet. So please leave a message um, if there's a doll that I didn't talk about that you think I should have. And please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.